welcome to my sewing room. One of the things that I am the very most excited about in sewing these days is the use of our wonderful embroidery machines or embroidery uh, units that fit onto a regular sewing machine. It is so much fun to embroider while you sew. Now let me share with you a few beautiful things. Do you see this darling little dress that Martha has on? By the way, you do know that Martha really is named for me and she even has her glasses. All right, this has a beautiful embroidery that is on the collar, on the uh, center front of the bodice and comes down around the skirt, beautiful little roses. You know, one of the things that I enjoy doing so much is making pillows for special occasions. Well, this pillow was made to celebrate a wedding with Linda and Scott, and they has the date that they married, and wonderful ecru on ecru uh, embroidery. This is one of the cutest things I've ever seen. It is a teapot cozy with three-dimensional embroidery, even a little tea bag in here, and the lovely placemat, which matches. It has the roses on the placemat, and then the teapot cozy, which, of course, will fit down right over the teapot. That's such a wonderful, civilized idea. Now then, look here. Isn't this beautiful? A, an angel hanging for Christmas, a wall hanging, and how pretty that is. Here is another beautiful angel wall hanging with machine embroidered cherubs and roses and, and beautiful, beautiful colors. And once again, using the machine embroidery to make a beautiful vest with all kinds of embellishment. The back, by the way, is just as pretty as the front using uh, different colored threads. And this I just love. Let me share this with you. A wonderfully tailored ladies blouse featuring machine wing needle entredeau and embroidery on the collar, embroidery on the, uh, on the tops of each shoulder, on the yokes. And this is the neatest idea, the embroidery that goes behind each buttonhole. And let me show you a little trick. This does not, you don't have to worry about centering this embroidery because you do it on the little tool squares and then you cut out the little square and bring it over and simply stitch it right around your buttonhole so you don't have to worry at all about placement. Isn't that a neat idea? And I have, and by the way, the lady who brought all these things with her today is Lana Bennett of the Singer Sewing Machine Company. And Lana will be sharing some more exciting ideas a little bit later. Right now, come along with me to the technique boards where we're going to look at three-dimensional elegant machine embroidery. I just love elegant linens done with the wonderful new embroidery features on today's sewing machines. Let's talk about a really wonderful placemat and napkin. This is, first of all, we start the placemat with an iron on with one shiny side that's on the back of the placemat, iron on pull away stabilizer. Then choose a design that is sort of filled in like this beautiful, these beautiful leaves right here, then embroider them on. Next comes the water soluble stabilizer, three layers of tulle, and another layer of water soluble stabilizer. All of that is promptly plopped into the embroidery hoop, hooked onto the machine, and then we have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful rose that is embroidered. Isn't that gorgeous? Just look at the depth of that rose. Then we're going to cut all this away. After it's embroidered, we're going to either cut or squirt a little water on the water-soluble stabilizer if it's hard to pull away or cut. Then very, very carefully cut away the tool. Be careful not to cut your embroidery stitches. After we have this beautiful rose, then we take it over to the placemat and zigzag or sew the top and the bottom only down where the leaves are. You see, I can actually run my finger through there, and there's a purpose of, for that. We're going to put a really nice and pretty delicate napkin through. Then I have a place to slip napkins in. Isn't that a wonderful way to set a table and have placemats like this for your, uh, for your uh, company best? And actually, you might use it for your family too, especially if this is out of a permanent press fabric. Next, I would like to introduce to you my very special guest, Lana Bennett. Lana is a, an educational sewing consultant with the Singer Sewing Company. And Lana, we are so happy to have you here today. It's wonderful to be here, Martha. <laughs> Thank you. 
What are you going to share for it with us now? I'm going to show you on the machine all the techniques that you've shown on the board all here. Right. <laughs> and as you mentioned, we have the leaves sewn onto the placemat, and you can sew those right off of the card. And what you want to do is choose a design that is nice and filled in and solid so that when you trim the leaves away, or I'm sorry, trim the rows away and place it on the leaves that it is raised. After that, you want to set that aside after you embroider the leaves, and you want to take your sandwich of wash away stabilizer and tool and place that in your embroidery hoop so that you have an area to embroider your rows. And as you can see that's a nice solid filled in design area there. Lana, were, that, were there two shades of thread used for that? Actually there are three in there Martha. Oh, it is just beautiful. It really gives you a lot of shades and <laughs> uh -huh. tones there. Then when you're finished you want to take that out of the hoop and carefully trim away all the tool. As you can see, you can spray with water and get the wash away stabilizer away and then trim very carefully, being careful not to trim your embroidery threads. And then you have your rows, your three-dimensional rows. Oh, that is beautiful. The next thing you want to do is take the rows and position it onto the leaves. And what I like to do on this top one is just raise it slightly so you get a three-dimensional effect and you give room for the napkin to fit in there. You want to pin that in place and then go over to your sewing machine and stitch it. And you can choose um, a three-step zigzag or a regular zigzag and just place it under the machine and use a monofilament thread or a clear invisible thread, then you don't see the stitches. I'm going to choose the zigzag on the machine and then just sew back and forth across the bottom of the design. So that's holding it in place. I tell you, these monofilament threads certainly do make attaching things a lot easier than they when we do. used to have to try to hide and get the correct color. Don't I they? know you can <laughs> stitch right on the design I love it. and I love not it. see it. And then I'm going to move to the top and just stitch on the top. So again, you're leaving that area open on both sides to place the napkin in. I'm going to zigzag across there use my automatic thread cutter. Oh, that's such a wonderful And thing. it's sewn on. <laughs> now I've used um, thread so that you can see where I've stitched again on here as we've done on the board, but you can see across the bottom and then across the top and I'll trim my threads and then you have your area ready to slip your napkin in. That is absolutely adorable and you know I just think that these we've just had so much fun since the the embroidery units were put on the machines. I know people are sewing that really didn't think they would ever be sewing again. They're just mm -hmm. having fun doing wonderful and elegant home decorating projects. While Lana, there's a store in London that has the most beautifully decorated sheets and placemats I've ever seen in my life and they literally cost hundreds of dollars so we're going to be able to cheat if we have one of these wonderful, wonderful machines and next we have a home decorating project for you Lana's going to share with you how you turn this lovely piece of linen with the beautiful rose on it into a really elegant placemat What I would like Lana to share with us now is how you make that beautiful, beautiful fringed edge with the uh, wing needle pin stitch around it. Could you show us how to do that, Lana? Sure, well. <laughs> what we've done on this edge after our rose is in place is I've measured out how far I want my edge of my placemat to be in my fringe. So then I've run my pin stitch along the edge and fringed it. And you can see here the finished edge with the pin stitch and then along this edge we have just the pin stitch ready to be fringed. Okay. Now I'm going to move over to the other side, ready to sew. And what I like to do for pin stitching is to pull several threads to give myself a guideline to stitch on. That is an excellent idea. Then it is called straight. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's straight and I have an area for the wing needle to move down into and I have a guide. Oh yeah, well that's a great idea. So what I've put is my open toe foot on here. Now I'm going to choose on this machine the regular pattern, the third screen, the second row, and the first stitch is our pin stitch. Okay. And what's wonderful here is I have the ability to mirror image this pin stitch. So I can flip it either direction depending on where I'm sewing. And I'd like my placemat to be out to the right so that the bulk of it isn't in the center of my machine. So I'm going to flip my pin stitch over 
and I can decrease the width of the pin stitch also. On this machine, standard set is seven millimeters. You have a choice of five millimeters and four millimeters. So that gets it real tiny? Or, it does, or yes. A nice size. I like the, um, the four millimeter, the tiny stitch on this. So what I'm going to do is position my wing needle, and I have placed a wing needle in the machine. Well, either a 100 or 120 do on that, Lana. Yes, either one, depending on how large you want your hole. Okay. And that's personal <laughs> preference. We all have our... As always. Yes. <laughs> then what I'm going to do is just start stitching down and using those pulled threads as my guide. Whoops, we seem to have lost our thread here. There we go. I think that is really one of the most beautiful stitches I have ever seen. The pin stitch, and some people call it the Madeira applique, and some people the Point de Paris. That's right. But it is absolutely beautiful with the uh, with the wing needle. It's just, of course, you can just use a uh, uh, regular needle too, like a 100 needle. Have you ever tried that? On, yes, like you the can. Swiss Batiste? Uh huh. You can use that if you don't want the, the large holes to give you a distinction if you just want the stitch itself. But it's such a versatile stitch. And not too many people think of using it on a placemat to fringe. The open toe foot also gives you the area so you can see, stop and adjust my fabric here, so you can see where you're going and where your stitches are. Oh, I just think that is one of the most beautiful stitches I have ever seen. You know, Lana, let me just ask you a, a question here. I don't mean to interrupt, but what That's about fine. people that don't have one of the uh, embroidery machines. Now, some people might be saying, well, you know, Martha and Lana, I don't have one of those machines. And I know you brought along a beautiful project yes, to I show did. the people that don't have one of those embroidery machines yet how they can have this same type of uh, uh, placemat with the napkin that slips underneath it. <laughs> you can do it just with fabric. And what I've done here is created, again, with my satin stitch, and I've satin stitched down some leaves, some fabric leaves, and then created a fabric rose, just your folded rose. And that is attached the same way as the embroidery was. We just stitched it at the bottom and at the top and left the center area open so that you can slide your napkin through. And did you just surge around the edge of the fabric for the napkins, Lana? Yes, that's just surged with some rayon thread. The decorative oh, rayon goodness me. Now that certainly seems easy enough too. It sure is. Well, these are absolutely beautiful projects that I certainly would love to have a set of those. And I think I'm going to have to go home and get busy. Next, we have a really beautiful doll dress for you. This doll dress has the most wonderful features. Now, let me just show you what I'm talking about. The neckline has entredeau and gathered lace at the top and gathered lace at the bottom. I love these little pleats in the front. They have a little decorative stitching down the middle, one, two pleats. Now this is the most interesting way to attach a collar, the little square collar. I'm gonna show you how in just a minute. The sleeves are absolutely beautiful with their pointed V with the lace and their pretty little feather stitch in between. Now then, the skirt is so elegant. And by the way, this is the little princess waistline that all of our doll dresses on this series have followed this line, as well as our little girls' doll dress patterns. The lace has been stitched down with a pin stitch. Here is a feather stitch, pin stitch lace, and then the little skirt, the lace that hangs down below, the little skirt has a little, uh, it's a tulle petticoat that makes the dress stick out really pretty too. Now let's see exactly how this is made. First of all, on your nylona, which this dress is made out of nylona, whatever fabric you're gonna use, we fold it in one pleat and simply stitched it down. Next, we're gonna fold in two more tucks, the tucks that come over here and they act as more pleats. There's one, two, three. That is also stitched down. After all of that stitching is done, then it is time to draw on the dress front. Then you'll be ready to cut it out. Now then, we've got to make those pretty collars. First of all, trace on the collars onto a piece of fabric. This one is uh, the pink Nalona. Then we're going to shape the laces around the outside of the collar on both of them. Now that's piece one and piece two. I have used a wing needle entredeau. I've already got this started over here. I've used a wing needle entredeau to stitch down, let me move that where you can see, I've, to stitch down the lace on the inside, I'm going to put 
gathered lace on the outside, but to stitch down this lace, I've used the wing needle entre dough. And when I come around here into the corners, I very carefully take out the pin. And when it looks like my entre dough stitch has been finished in the corners, I just stop, lift, turn, and I'll be ready to head on down this side. And I can go as fast as I want to go with this wing needle entre dough stitch because as you can see, I have a paper stabilizer underneath it. And I'm going to do that on both sides of the collar. As you can see over here, I have already done. That's a, a blue pin stitch, wing needle pin stitch down both sides. Then it is finished. I'm now ready to slice it in the middle and get two collars. So see, I now have two collar pieces. I next add my entre dough to the edge of the collar. And then to finish it off, I'm going to put the gathered lace edging and I'm going to do a feather stitch around the collar and then I will slip it underneath this center pleat or that tuck that looks like a pleat and then my bodice is ready to put the sleeve on. Now how do we make this pretty gathered skirt? First of all, trace off your lines and these are the turnaround lines. So trace the lines off and this is something real interesting. I have turned up the hem on the bottom of this skirt past this line, in other words, when I stitch the lace down, it will also stitch the hem into the skirt. Then I shape the laces around, and let me show you back here what I mean. I still have the hem turned up, but my lace is this lace and this lace, when I stitch it down, that will finish off my hem. See, when I do zigzag and zigzag, then I'll come back in there and trim. It's now time to zigzag or wing needle entre dough, both of these sides, and then it will be all finished when you finished your decorative stitching. Next, I have a home decorating project for you. This is a most unusual Silk Dupioni flower pillow. The pillow has a really pretty inside, which believe it or not, that is plaid Silk Dupioni that makes that. These beautiful pink leaves, and of course you could use any color for your decorating scheme, and these wonderful green leaves. Now, how in the world do you make this beautiful pillow. Well, it's really very easy. Starting out with the plaid, you literally, I mean, this is kind of crazy. You think, well, goodness me, that doesn't look too hard. Well, it isn't. You literally twist the plaid like that. Don't even finish the edges, just twist it. And then you circle the plaid around, pin it, and stitch that by hand. The leaves are right sides to right sides. Turn it out, turn it back, you know, right side out. And then put a little pleat in the bottom of the pin. And the bigger pink leaves, the same situation, except you stitch a gathering row across the bottom of the pink leaves after you stitch them. And pull, pull the gathering threads until you get them gathered the way you want them to gather. Then we're going to take the pieces and we're going to work this whole pillow on a circle of silk dupioni. I'm going to put each one of these little gathered leaves. I'm going to flip these leaves, the cups to the inside. It'll make it easier to, to pin. That's one, two, three, four. And then I'll finish gathering this leaf we just made, and that'll be five leaves. And then I will straight stitch these leaves down to the circle of fabric. And then after that, we'll bring in the center piece, which will need to be big enough to cover the leaves. And after we finish the pillow, then we'll come back in with the little leaves that go on the bottom. And that way we will have a completed pillow just like that. Next, I have a beautiful quilt square to share with you. The technique is Madeira Applique Motif. We're having such a good time on this series with this beautiful blue and white quilt. The square for today is this absolutely beautiful Madeira applique heart done out of blue. It has machine stitched hearts around it and then a little machine stitched bow right here and right here. Now there's a beautiful pin stitch that, stitched that, Madeira, that stitches that Madeira applique heart down. It really is easy to do Madeira applique, this particular technique, so let me just share it with you now. First of all, since my heart is blue, I draw the design off on blue fabric. This is blue linen. Then I put my water-soluble stabilizer on top of the heart I have just drawn, and then I tiny straight stitch all the way around the heart. 
This one has had the straight stitch around the heart. Now then, I'm going to cut the water-soluble stabilizer only. There's a little trick to doing this. You kind of pull it up. Let me put my scissors here. You pull it up and then make a little slice and then come in here cutting through the water-soluble stabilizer only. This is going to act as a little facing for this Madeira applique, the easy way, so we're going to turn it right side out. Now then, we're ready to turn it right side out. I'm going to come around and clip along the little curve so they'll turn nicely. I'm going to come in here and that will be a facing, so I'll turn the heart right side out all the way around with the little curves that are clipped and I'll come back in here and you see I have a perfectly finished heart as soon as I get in there and play with it a little bit ready to lay down on the quilt square which is white and I've drawn the heart off on that. Now I'm going to use a pin stitch which I've already got this over at the machine ready to go. I'm going to use a wing needle and stabilizer and a pin stitch to stitch this down and after I've turned it real, real carefully, I think you can see that absolutely it is finished and all I have to do is put it right down on top of the quilt square and pin stitch it. Did you notice too that I did not start at the edge? As in applique, I think it's easier with Madeira applique if you don't start right at a point. I started right in the middle of the heart. Then when I come to the bottom of the heart, after I get this stitch ready, okay, I'm just gonna pick it up and veer on around. Now, after I have completed the stitching, the Madeira applique looks like that, and we're almost finished. Next, I'm going to take the Madeira applique that has been pin stitched down. I'm going to do my machine hearts that go all the way around on the outside line, around here, or you could use any decorative stitch, it doesn't have to be machine hearts. And then I will go in and put a machine stitch. This time I used a blue bow. I'll put a bow here and a bow there. And there's nothing that says that you might want to also do uh, like a shadow work embroidery or a silk ribbon embroidery. You don't have to use machine embroidery, but I think it's really beautiful to do that. Now won't you come along with me to my attic? <music> had so much fun today looking at the marvels of the wonderful embroidery machines. And you know what? This used to be the embroidery machine of yesterday. <laughs> it was a needle and a thread, and some of the most magnificent blouses were done around the turn of the century. This happens to be one of them. The embroidery is just gorgeous. By the way, if you have one of the embroidery machines, you can do something very similar to this using your machine embroidery with white on white on a handkerchief linen or a linen blend. This blouse has just unbelievable, as a matter of fact, I call it blouse of many stitches because it has so many magnificent stitches. There are some little release tucks here, but look at the eyelets that come around. The eyelets come around all the way around the neckline and then down the middle, this is padded satin stitch with drawn work in between. Then right over here is more padded satin stitch and let me see if I can open that for you just a little bit so you can see that it has faggoting in between the padded satin stitch. Down a little bit more are more eyelets and more padded satin stitch. This time there are Richelieu bars in between the stitches. More eyelets and then look at the sleeves. Absolutely incredible embroidery on the sleeves, just beautiful work. And I'm not through yet because I'm gonna turn this blouse around and let you see the incredible embroidery that is on the back. Beautiful, beautiful stems and vines and eyelets and, and the uh, faggoting that's in between the padded satin stitch and more eyelets at the bottom. And those wonderful little antique buttons that occasionally you can find at a craft fair or at a flea market. Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today, and I certainly would like to invite you back next time.